Any new dads in the room? I mean, like you still got a little toddler around, like your first toddler? Raise your hand. Any new dads in the room? Come on. Okay, they're over here. We got new dads on the north side of the worship center today. All right, so I ran across a story about a new dad. And it goes like this. So they had the baby. It was like two weeks after having their first child. And the mom had to be out of the house all day long. And so she did one of these. Here you go, honey. You get to take care of, you know, little, little Billy or, or, or Sue, whatever the name of the kid is, right, all day. And so you know how you were. The first, you're like, okay, right? So it was going great for the first couple hours, right, because the baby was sleeping. So that's always a nice thing. The baby wakes up and starts screaming and starts, starts just, just in, a, in, a, in a fuss. And the dad did everything he knew to do to calm that baby down, and it wasn't working. So he got so worried that he decided, i got to take this kid into urgent care. <laughs> hey, we get desperate, all right? We don't know what we're doing. I'm just being honest with you, especially with our first. We have no clue. And so this dad takes the baby into urgent care. The doctor sees the baby, checks out the ears, the nose, the throat, the temperature, takes the pulse, all that kind of stuff. And it's like everything is looking really good. I don't see any problems. But then the doctor takes off the diaper for, for, you know, and goes, well, sir, I think I found the problem. And, and he said, the baby's diaper is, is full. He just needs to be changed. The dad looked confused at the doctor, and he remarked, but the diaper package says that it's good for up to 10 pounds. <laughs> Y'all, that's how we start off as dads. That's about all we know. So we live in a world that struggles with understanding love. That was the one joke you get today, all right? That was it. That's all I got in me. We live in a world, though, that struggles understanding love. And with all the dysfunction that we find in our families, around the country, or around this nation, in our culture, there's just so much confusion about love, specifically about father's love. What is a father's love supposed to look like in 2022? What is it supposed to look like? Today, on this Father's Day, I want us to go to God's Word to show us how deep the Father's love. You're like, we sang that song. I know. I asked that we would sing that song. Because I think God has something to say. I know God has something to say to all of us on this Father's Day. Whether you're a father or not. Whether you're even male or female. By the way, those are the only two you get to choose from, right? Male or female. Whether you're one. Whatever it is, God has a message about Father's love and how deep it is, how great it is for all of us today. A good place to discover what, what Father's love looks like is in a parable that Jesus told, and that's the parable of the prodigal son. How many of you know that one? All right, this is, this is somewhat repeat, but let it be fresh. Let it be fresh to you today. Jesus continued, and here goes the parable. Jesus said that there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. In other words, give me my inheritance. So he, the father, divided his property between them. So you got a dad, got a father, an earthly father. He's got two sons. One son says, hey, I'm ready to go off and do life my way. Can I have my inheritance? And I just want to stop and, and hit point number one right there. And that is that a father's love provides. A father's love provides. Did you notice that the father in this parable had everything that his sons needed? He already had it all ready for them. He had provisions set aside. He had an inheritance. He had an estate all set up, lined up for his kids. His sons were set for life. They were set for success. Now, you're going to see we're not just talking about money here. That's not where we're going with this. But there's a principle here. The story starts off with a father who had for his sons everything that they needed. I remember when Jake, 
Our oldest was born. He's going to be here next week leading worship. I remember when he was born. He's 26 years old now. Oh, my goodness. He's like a man. He can kick my butt, actually, now. We've never actually fought, but I don't know, man. It would be a close one. It would be a close one. So um, we were so excited that he was coming. So what did we do? We started getting ready for him. I should say my wife started getting ready for him. I just went to work every day, and she started getting ready for him. You see these pictures up here. I'm not in any of the pictures. My wife is getting the nursery ready. What's she doing? She's getting diapers. She's getting baby clothes. That's, that's her dad. That's Jim right over here helping out. She's got her dad helping out for her son that's about ready to come. They're painting. They're getting everything lined up. We bought a stroller. We bought a car seat. We had toys. We had baby wipes. We were prepared for our son. We wanted to make sure that he had what he would need when he showed up and we brought him home. Now, I want to make some statements here. You can take those crazy pictures down. My wife doesn't look any different, does she? She's just still a young, beautiful woman. Love it. I want you to, to connect with something and to realize something right now. Do you realize that before you were born, I'm talking about you now, before you were born, everything that you needed for life and godliness was taken care of by your Heavenly Father? We read that in 2 Peter 1.3. Before you were born, your father had it all prepared, all put together and ready for you. That the Heavenly Father blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ before you took your first breath. It says that in Ephesians 1. He prepared for you. He provided for you. He was ready for you. And he's ready for you right now. And most importantly, the Father provided the shed blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, all taken care of before you were even born. You see, a Father's love provides. And we have a Father, a Heavenly Father, who has provided us with everything we need. Everything. It says in James 1.17 that every good, I love that word, every. All right, I'm going I'm to get, repeat, say every. every. All right, I just had to get that out of me. All right. Every good and perfect gift comes from where? From above, coming down from who? From the Father of lights. That's the Heavenly Father who does not change like shifting shadows. Our Heavenly Father provides all that we need. And it's good. And He's not wishy-washy in His provision. He doesn't change. Our God, our, our Father, remember this, it says, all right, y'all know John 3.16? It's a statement of God's provision, the Father's provision for us. For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that He gave, He provided His one and only Son, that whoever, whoever would receive this provision from Him, would not die, but would have everlasting, eternal life. And then he goes on in verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to do what? But to save the world through Him. A Father's love provides what His children need. Not what they want, not what their flesh wants, or even desires, but what they need, the Father provides. I want to cut to the chase. I, I just want to, I want to put out there the main point of this entire message. I could just close after this, but you know me, I'm not going to close right after this statement. But, but if you get anything about the Father's love, get this, that the ultimate display the ultimate display of the Father's love 
is found in the giving of His Son, Jesus, as a ransom for our sins. The ultimate display of the Father's love is found in the giving of His Son, Jesus, for what? As a ransom for our sins. Brent mentioned this passage of Scripture last week. It's been on my heart all week long and last week, and that is 1 John 4.10. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And how did He love us? He sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice, a propitiation, a provision, if you will, for our sins. This is love. A Father's love provides how deep the Father's love for us. But God demonstrated His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How deep the Father's love. As the song continues, it's vast beyond all measure. God, the Father, this is 2 Corinthians 5.21, the Father made Him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. A Father's love provides. A Father's love provides a way. Gives us what we couldn't get on our own. A Father's love provides. The Father gave the life of His Son so that we might live and not die. The Father gave the life of His Son as a ransom in order to bring us, ransom us to Himself. The Father gave the sinless for the sinful. How deep the Father's love. See, we, we, we all need to connect on this Father's Day with the Father's love. God has something for all of us, not just the dads in the room. I believe God has something for every single person in the room here today. He wants you to remember His love. And it's a love that provides everything that you need. And everything that you couldn't provide for yourself. So a father's love provides. You know, dads, how, what can we learn from this? You know, more than just providing monetary or economic legacy or inheritance or estate for our kids, which I think it's, it's good. We are called to provide in those ways. But more than that, what do we learn from the Heavenly Father's provision? We learn that a Father's love provides care and a Father's love provides sacrifice. And we can all learn from that. It's hard to sacrifice. That's why it's called sacrifice, right? But there is so much love when we will sacrifice for our wife, for our children. Let's go back to the parable. Prodigal son, what did this younger son who asked for his portion of the inheritance, what did he do at that point? How did it all work out? What did he do with the generosity, the provision of his father? It says this, continuing in verse 13. Not long after that, after getting the, the money from dad, the provision from dad, the younger son got together all he had, and then he set off. He left. Set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. In other words, satisfying the flesh, doing life his way. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. 
I'm going to set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. You know, as I was reading that this week, I was just reminded of some of the friends I have who have poured so much into their kids, who've been godly examples to them, who've loved them, but their, their kids have wandered off, decided to, to do life their own way, in many ways become prodigals. And that's been heavy on my heart all week. And just in reading this and, and in knowing the whole story of the prodigal son and knowing the father's love as I've been really meditating on that all week long, I just want to say, first of all, you're not alone. That you have other brothers in the Lord who have walked through or are walking through and dealing with the same thing. Where they've provided, they've, they've poured out and their, their kids have, have walked away. I also want to encourage you that don't give up on them, as we're going to continue to read about the prodigal son and the father in this, in this parable. Don't give up. Never give up. Never give up. So the son messed it up pretty bad, didn't he? Took all that inheritance, went out, had a wild, crazy time, spent it all, ended up in a pigsty, you know, slopping the pigs and all that kind of stuff. Finally decides to go back to his dad, just even to be only a servant. I imagine that his dad was probably irate, right? He, he was ready to, to smack him upside the head as soon as he saw his son. Maybe he, he was ready to cut him off. Maybe he was even going to disown him. Uh, not even consider him or call him his son anymore. But that's not what happened. That's not how it went down. You know, often we can be afraid to go to God because we messed up. We've abused the grace and the mercy that He's, he's given us. We've gone off and we've just kind of done things our own way. We've sinned against God and others. And we look at ourselves and we think, I'm just a dirty, rotten scoundrel. I don't, I don't, there's no way I can go back to God. I'm here to tell you, if you don't go back to God, you're going to stay miserable. You're going to stay trapped. You're going to stay alone and broken. God wants you to come back. He wants you to come back. There's this song that a guy by the name of Cody Carnes wrote. And some of the lyrics go like this. This song, you know, when I, when I live life, songs just jump in my head. That's how powerful music is. So be careful, little ears, what you hear and what you take in. Because it's going to be bouncing around in that head of yours. And that's what you're going to be meditating on, consciously and subconsciously. So be careful what you listen to. Let it be God-honoring, edifying, good doctrine, and so forth. But this song jumped in my head that I'd heard several times over the last year. And it says, I, it says this, I says, I run to the Father. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. And then check this out. It says, I'm done with the hiding. No reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again and again. We all run someplace. Run to the Father. The love of the Father is calling you to run to Him. Not away from Him, but run to Him. Check this out. So the son goes back. He decides to repent, to turn back, to go back to the father's house, back to his dad. And it says this about the father and about how the father thought of his son. 
who just squandered all of that money, embarrassed him. Here's, here's how the father responded when his son said, I'm coming back. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him. You know, that's a picture that, that the father's looking, longing and looking, hoping and dreaming for the day that his son's going to return. That's what I'm seeing in that. That's just me, okay? A long way off, the father sees him. His father saw him and was filled with what? Rage? Embarrassment? No, it says that he was filled with compassion for him. And he didn't lock the door or run from him or put a no vacancy sign out on the house. Instead, it said that he ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. Point number two, a father's love forgives. So we, we know that a father's love provides and a father's love forgives. So the father saw the son. He was looking and longing for his son. And I just want to tell you, even this is just coming to me now, if you have a, a strange kind of relationship, a tense relationship with your dad, and you might think, man, the last time we talked, it was, it was bad. He doesn't want to hear from me. He doesn't want anything to do with me. I'm going to say down deep in your father's heart, in your dad's heart, I can tell you this. He, he longs for restored relationship with you. And I want to encourage you even today, maybe the last thing you want to do because of that kind of relationship with your dad, the last thing you want to do is reach out to him. And just say hi and happy Father's Day. I want to encourage you to do it. Take that step. Take that step. The Father's love in this parable and our Heavenly Father's love is watching, waiting, and longing for us to come to Him. He is. Hear the heart of God. This is in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. This is the heart of God. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God doesn't want you running from Him. Whatever your condition is, He wants you coming to Him. Coming to Him. Instead of pushing you away, God is calling you to turn from those lies that are bouncing around your head that, that it's not going to work out good and God doesn't want to hear from you again. Just say in Jesus' name, silence those lies. Drop that burden of sin and run to your Heavenly Father. I want to point out something else, though. So in, in this whole story, there's an element to the story that I want to make sure that we don't overlook. And it's an element that, that we can't overlook as far as our relationship with God. And that's the element of repentance. Do you notice in this, there was, a, there was that point when the son, who was living in sin, sinning against his father and God, had to wake up to the reality of what he was doing and call it out for what it was, sin, and turn from it. That's called repentance. See, the father is waiting for the son to come, but he's looking for the son to, to recognize, realize the folly that he's living in and then turn back to him. And so I just want to say, is there anything in your life that you need to turn from that's keeping you from, from God, that's keeping you from that kind of tight, intimate relationship with Him? Is there something that, that you need to reject and repent of, turn away from, and turn to God? 
I want to encourage you on this Father's Day, just do it. Make this the day. The day of repentance. The day of, of letting go of whatever it is that you've, your flesh has been holding on to. And turn to your heavenly Father. See, not only did the Father's love watch for His Son, but the Father's love then ran to His Son and embraced Him with a kiss. And I, I believe, to me, this is a beautiful picture of forgiveness. To the repentant, God says in Hebrews 8, 12, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sin no more. And that's what this father did with his prodigal son who came home. He did what? He forgave his son's wickedness and he remembered his sin no more. You know, God has had to do that with his people all throughout history. Probably all throughout your life, too. I know my life. He's had to be patient with me and with you and with his people. And he's had to, in grace and mercy, welcome his children back home into his arms and into his will. Here's an example in Isaiah 40. It says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. It's the Father's heart right here. This was, a, this, was a, this was a people who was not necessarily honoring God up to that point. But God says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And then a voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. God longs for his people to come back to him. And he longs to extend forgiveness. Sometimes we don't recognize that. The Father has not written you off, and He's not looking to punish you. Believe me, your sin's punishing you enough right now, and there are real results for the sin that we commit. But He's looking to forgive you and to restore you. That's His heart. He sent His one and only Son from heaven to put on flesh, to go to a cross, to take the full punishment and weight of your sin. A father's love, he, 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 he's ready to forgive. He is. And he's ready to restore. And that brings me to point number three. A father's love restores. Back to Luke 15, verse 21. Luke 15, 21. The son said to him, Father. So here he's back. His father came out. He greeted him with a hug and a kiss. And the son cries out to his dad and says, says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. Again, do we see repentance in that? An acknowledgement, an understanding of what he's done. And a willingness to humble himself and to actually own up to it. Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf. Kill it. Let's have a feast. Let's celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So they began to celebrate. A father's love restores. I just want to speak, if there's any dad in here, if there's any dad watching online and you've had conflict with one of your children, it's time to man up. It's time to humble up. You've received so much from your heavenly Father. Forgiveness, restoration, grace, and mercy today 
is the day for you to extend that to your child. Today is the day. The Father's love restores. He longs to embrace. He longs to restore us unto himself. No more separation. No more, no more pigsties. I don't know about you, but when I'm living in sin, life feels like a pigsty. There's no peace, there's no beauty, there's no joy. Everything's just polluted. God wants to restore you to knowing that peace that passes understanding. He wants to restore you to a hope and a joy that's found in Him. A father's love restores. This is love, it says again in 1 John 4.10. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So here's how I want to end our time together this morning. I want us to stand up. And we're going to sing that song that we sang earlier. That's actually titled, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And I just want to, each one of us, individually and also us corporately, as His church, to take this opportunity to come into agreement with the depth, the, the, the enormity of the Father's love for us. And allow even this moment to be a moment, if things need to be broken off of you, if, if there's a humbling that needs to happen in your life, a repentance that needs to happen, if there's a turning back to the Father that needs to happen, let this moment, as we're making this confession and this declaration with our mouths, be that moment for you. Because your Heavenly Father provides, He forgives, and He restores. How deep the Father's love. Let's sing that.